Shop Master George Borkart, and this is another Higher Things video short. Where to go with your doubts? That's the subject of today's Higher Things video short. Hey, if you love our videos, if you are learning about your Christian faith in places you never expected to learn about your faith from, a Missouri Synod pastor and his Jack Russell Terrier named, oh, we missed, Thor, go ahead and like and subscribe today. You can also go to support.higherthings.org and give today your tax-deductible gift into the year. Make a tax-deductible gift. Help us. Keeps Higher Things, a youth organization, all about passing the faith to the next generation. Keeps us a rolling. Fourth, third Sunday in Advent brings us the rose. There it is. Oh, it's over there. The rose. Um... Paramount, Rose, Candle, and the traditional gospel lesson from Matthew chapter 11. When John heard in prison the deeds, the works of the Christ, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we be looking for another? Are you the coming one? Are you the Advent one? Or do we need to be looking for another? Now, um, a lot of ink has been spilt on this subject. A lot of folks have considered whether John doubted or not. And I've preached both John couldn't have doubted and John has doubted, did doubt. If you preach for 19 years, you end up like that. But um, in my old age, and by the way, the majority of, of commentators will say that he didn't doubt, doubt, along with the early church and Luther. A simple read of the text, you can't avoid the question on a simple read. Are you the one who is to come, or do we need to look for another with him in prison? But in my old age, I've determined that um, it, that's the wrong question. The question is not whether John doubts or not. I mean, he saw the, he heard the voice. He saw the dove come down from heaven, the spirit descend on him like a dove. He saw all those things. How could he possibly doubt? And the thing to do with the John question is to take your eyes off of John and put them on who John takes these doubts to. He takes them to Jesus. Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up and the poor have the good news preached to them. And blessed are the one who is not scandalized because of me. So the place to go with your doubts is not to hide them like a fig tree, like we, like we took a fig leaf and uncovered our nakedness after the fall. It's not to deny them or convince God otherwise. No, God, I, I don't really doubt. I believe in you completely. Um, if you had faith like a mustard seed, you could tell the mountains to be uprooted and tossed into the sea, and they would obey you, and yet no mountains are moving in our lives. And so this tells me that the place to go with your doubts, the place to go with your despair, is to confess them to Jesus and receive forgiveness. To look at the Lord and say, I, I'm, I'm struggling here. I, things are not going the way I intended them to go. I don't know what to do. Where are you? And we'll find in that honest confession what Jesus does for us. And what he does is he takes upon himself our doubts and our despair and he takes upon himself our sin and our unbelief and he dies. Look at the lame, the deaf, the crippled, and the poor. They all receive gifts from God. The poor have the gospel preached. We have the gospel preached to us. And so the place to go is not to wonder what's going on in John. It's to take comfort that, that Jesus is the savior of doubters and unbelievers and those who can't keep the first commandment. If you look up at the at, at, the, at the cross of Christ and ponder how he could possibly save someone like you who doubts as much as you do, who has seen all the glory and majesty of Almighty God, 
in his gifts and in your life and yet still looks up to heavens and goes, seriously? There's a place for you. There's a savior for you. So you're saying people are saved without believing? You never said that. I'm saying be real about your unbelief and doubt and confess it to God. That's what God it to teaches you. There is no rejoicing in covering up your sins like a cat covers his business in the cat box. There is only despair there because God knows better. Confess your sins. Confess your unbelief. Confess your doubts. Confess your despair. Confess that you aren't in agreement with how your life is going and you will find a Savior. One who is born for you lives for you, heals the sick, raises the dead, preaches the gospel to the poor for you, who dies for you, who rose for you, and who lives for you. In Jesus, there is only comfort and rejoicing, which is what this week is all about. The third Sunday in Lent, the, the Advent, the third week of Advent, is all about the Lord rejoicing. Take your doubts to Jesus and receive his faithfulness and forgiveness. I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this has been another Higher Things video short.